Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we are going to be painting uh, Chief Brian Irons from the Resident Evil 2 board game. So this is a character from the Resident Evil 2 video game and also in the board game and he's one of the more nasty characters, one of the more uh, frustrating and annoying characters that you come across. Um, he's the chief of police but he's not a particularly good chief at that. Um, so we're going to start as always with the skin and we're going to use the beige red as a nice base color like I normally do uh, just to get a nice base coat uh, across all of the skin. So this is across the face and the hands um, and this is a really good base color. This allows us to build up some really really nice bright and vibrant skin tones a little bit later. From there then I'm going to move on to doing the hair. Now for Brian Irons, the original old fashioned version of him is quite old. So we're gonna use a few gray colors. So I'm gonna use a Miskatonic gray from Scale 75. And I'm just gonna paint this across the hair and of course across the little mustache as well. Across the top lip uh, of his face as well, just around the mouth. Now once that's dry, we're going to move on and use Ghost Grey. And Ghost Grey, we're just going to paint all of the shirt. So if you've followed my channel before and you've seen me paint other different colours where I use whites and things like that, I normally like to base things in a light, light grey colour first and then build up from there a little bit later. Uh, sometimes it's better to base in grey and build up to white rather than trying to paint white straight out um, because building up to the white gives you a much smoother transition and a much nicer vibrance when you get to the end as well. I'm using an AK Interactive Ash Grey for the waistcoat, so checking out any of the pictures or references that I've got for Brian, uh, he seems to have a dark grey waistcoat with a light white coloured shirt, but then he's also got sort of these dark grey trousers with a little bit of a light blue or, or a little bit of a dark blue tinge to them. So we're just going to build these colours up uh, basically and then we're going to go from there with a little bit of shade and build the colours back up. So we're just using this ash grey which is a really good dark grey colour but it doesn't have any other colours to it so it doesn't have any sort of like blue tinges or anything like that. This is a nice flat grey colour and it's quite an in-between it's dark it's almost like a um, like a coal or a charcoal kind of gray which is really really great now for the trousers we're going to use a dark blue gray so again this is a dark gray color but as this dries you'll notice there is a subtle difference between the ash gray to the dark blue gray and the dark blue gray is exactly as it says on the pot it does have a hint or a uh, touch of blue to the coloring but we're going to build that up a little bit further uh, later anyway but this is just our base coat so this is just giving us that dark blue gray base color um, that we can then build from a little bit later so we're trying to be careful just placing all of these base coats you don't have to be overly careful when you apply in sort of base colors and things like that but I do find that it is always better to be a little bit more uh, subtle and a little bit more careful just in case that you do make too many mistakes. Um, it's nice to keep the colours nice and tight and nice and close together so that when you do build the colours back up it gives you less work a little bit later. So we're going to use one of my favourite colours which is a uh, dark rust colour which is a dark brown and we're just going to use this across the shoes here so this is just going to be a really really good base color dark brown on the shoes now we're just going to use a nice base coat of plain red so this is just going to be for the tie area as you can see I'm just trying to be very very careful here just using the very tip of the brush just to pick out some of the detail on the tie and again once we use uh, the little bit of the shade and we get this into the recess points we'll be able to pick this back out a little bit nicer I'm also just going to use a small amount of silver on the gun. Now for this one I'm using actually gun metal, which is one of my go-to silvers. It's one of my favorite colors. Um, this is a really good dark, dark silver, uh, which is always a good color that you can build up some nice vibrant shine from and things like that. Then we're just going to go straight for a dead white, and this is a really bright, vibrant white color. And I'm just going to paint this just across the name badge here. Um, don't have to be overly uh, precious with this, just always good to be just a little bit careful so we don't get this on the ash gray. 
Now we're going to start with the first shade, and with the first shade I'm using a Null Nile from Citadel. So this is a black wash or a black shade, and the reason why I'm starting with the black shade is because uh, we're going to cover everything apart from the skin in this colour. And the reason being is this is going to allow us to get a really nice um, sort of a great like um, dark black sort of colouring in all of those creases. So as you can see, especially across things like those trousers and the shirt as well, you can see just how much detail is being picked out by this shade. So the shade will sit in the recess points and it will sit in those areas where you can see all the folds of the cloth and everything like that. And then we can build the colours back up from there. Using Null Nile like this is a great way of getting the uh, the darker areas or the folds and the, 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 the sort of dynamic pose of the model to really show through. Um, in a really quick and easy way. It's a really good colour for this sort of thing. I'm also going to use a little bit just across the hair and maybe just a little bit across the moustache as well. Again, I'm going to try to be as careful as possible just to make sure that I don't get this on uh, any of the skin. And then once that's dry, we're going to move on and use the second of our shades. And we're going to use a Reikland Flare Shade from Citadel. And this one is a really cool colour for skin shades. So this one gives a really good sort of colour and a really good sort of shade to uh, the base colours that we've used the skin. So we're going to use this just across the hands and of course the face as well. And as I say, this is a great way of, of, of shading skin because this gives a little bit of a shade and a little bit of a colour and a little bit of texture to the skin. But it also um, gives a little bit of vibrance, a little bit of warmth to that uh, colour as well because it's, it's not a brown shade nor is it a black shade. It's got this sort of um, warm ready colour which is great because that's really going to bring a little bit of warmth to the miniature as well. And once all of the shades have dried, we're then going to start to pick out all of those colours again. So we're going back to that base colour of the beige red, and we're just going to try to pick out as much of the detail around the face as we can. And the, the trick with this is using the very, very tip of your fine detail brush, and just trying to pick out areas where you think the light would be, and where the skin is going to pick, uh, pick out some more of the light and, and bring more of that colour through, while leaving a lot of the shade in the recessed areas. So we're leaving the shade just in... Um, some of the detail points so around the eyes, inside the ears, just around the chin and things like that. And as you can see we're going to do the same thing across the hand. So we're going to build these colours back up but we're just going to leave that shade uh, sat in between the fingers and things because this is where that depth is going to come from. So this is where we're going to build that colour in, that depth, that more natural highlight in. And the cool thing is because we've gone from the base colour then to the shade and then back to the base colour the, um, the sort of blend and the colour transition is actually going to be quite natural, it's going to be quite neutral so this is going to give us a really good um, natural sort of uh, mixture and a natural sort of blend back into the colour which is great because as we start to highlight and we use in these thinned down uh, mixed colours together we're going to get that natural boost into the vibrancy and the natural highlighting is going to show through quite nicely. So we're going to use beige red and basic skin tone. Again, if you followed the channel or if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I use this technique quite a lot. And pretty much that's all I'm doing is just mixing these two colours by 50% each. So this is 50% of the beige red and 50% of the basic skin tone. Uh, and that's given us the first uh, perfect step highlight uh, onto the original skin tone. And again, it's always good to add a little bit of water into your paints just to make them flow a little bit better. But it also allows them to dry down a lot smoother as well, creating that transition that I was talking about, creating that really nice smooth uh, colour transition so that you can see where the highlighted points are uh, just across the raised areas and where the shade is sitting in all of the detail points. And you can see I'm doing the same thing, picking all of those details out on the hand, um, just in the same uh, in exactly the same technique. So it's always about using uh, the very tip of your brush, just trying to be as, as, as careful as possible. And the good thing by using those thin layers, by adding a little bit of water, is that you can use multiple layers and that will help to build the vibrancy as well and help to build the color um, and help to get that, that sort of, um, that nice transition up in stages. So we're going to move back once the skin is done to the Miskatonic Grey. Now you can add more skin if you wanted. If you wanted to update your skin and go that little bit step further, you can do. But I found that that, that, uh, uh, that, that first highlight was fine. 
And that's all I'm going to do now for the hair with this Miskatonic grain is I'm just going to use a very, very simple dabbing motion. As you can see, I'm just going to use a very quick stippling motion. And this is just going to build the difference between sort of the darker color underneath and the lighter color that I want just sticking out on top. And it's going to give a uh, the illusion of a little bit of a texture to the hair. So the hair isn't going to be just one flat color. So once we've got that dry, we're just going to go on to the ghost grey. So this is the colour that we used on the sleeves and on the shirt and things like that anyway. So we're just going to build the base colour back up with this ghost grey. And again, using a nice thin paint, as you can see, that colour from underneath is also going to show through. So that's going to allow us to build this vibrancy in a really, really nice, simple, um, very, very nice, thin simple um, color boost so this, this vibrance just the same as we did with the skin is just going to boost nice and slowly nice and evenly up and again using thin paint is very very important to this because if you use a really thick big blob of paint not watering it down uh, you might find then that the vibrance might be a bit too extreme in some areas and you might lose that sort of um, color transition that you're looking for you might lose out on that smoothness of building the colors back up Ideally, when your paint is nice and thin, it should show through a little bit of the color that's underneath. So a little bit of that dark, dark gray that we've got, it should allow you then to build on top in multiple layers to create, as I've said before, a lighter vibrancy and bring out some more of the color and more of the tone. Um, and that's a good way to go about it because what you want to do is you don't want just one layer and done. You kind of want to add more layers onto your model because the more layers you gain and the more layers you paint, uh, the more vibrancy you get. So the more uh, depth to your model, the more pleasing it is on the eye and the cooler it is to look at as well. And again, as you can see, I'm just using the very tip of the brush and I'm just picking up bits of the shirt there as well. So the collar, the cuffs of the shirt and a little bit of the shirt in between the waistcoat as well. Now the cool thing with the ghost grey is you can mix uh, the ghost grey with the dead white, both from Vallejo. And again, if you mix half and half, so 50% of each, so one blob of each paint and a little bit of water, just to water it down quite nicely, you can then use this as a really nice vibrant sort of highlight to that grey. And this is going to create that really great um, sort of uh, highlight or vibrant texture. So as you can see, I'm painting this across, again, the raised areas of the shirt. What I'm doing is I'm painting this across the top half of the shirt of the arm that's pointing the pistol. And the reason being is because the underneath of the shirt would be a little bit more of a dark grey, whereas the uh, the top part catching the light would be a little bit of a lighter, uh, brighter colour. I particularly like this technique where we mix these whites together and we get this really cool, vibrant sort of... Um, different kind of a pop from the white by using the gray and the reason being is because say if you've got a shirt and you've washed it a few times and you've wore the same shirt you think with with Brian here he's he's wore the same shirt back and forth to work all the time his shirt's not going to be bright 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 vibrant it's going to lose a little bit of color over time and that's going to create a little bit more um, of a, a, a personal touch to your model as well which is great so we're going to go back to that ash grey then, so the colour that we based our waistcoat with, and we're just going to start to build that back up in exactly the same way that we've been doing with our shirt. And that's all we're going to do is just build those colours back up while leaving the black shade and the black wash just sitting in those recess points and in those folds. And again, the cool thing by using the very tip of the brush is you can use some of those brush strokes as well to create a few extra creases and a few extra uh, little bits of layers and textures, which is going to create a little bit more for the eye to look at and create a little bit of a, a, a textured sort of version to this waistcoat, which is great. That's exactly what we, what we want. We don't want everything to be too perfect and too smooth. We kind of want things to be a little bit scratchy and, and, and rough and ready as well because that's going to add a little bit more grit and, and realism in some ways to the model that we paint in as well. I mean this is a survival horror game after all. This isn't a very perfect world. This is a very grimy and, and, and broken down and battered world. So that's kind of what we want is a few of these uh, a few of these brush strokes to add to that texture and character which is perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. And as you can see that's all I'm doing is just following those raised areas. So as I said earlier, the slight difference between the dark blue grey to the ash grey, and we're just going to go and do the exact same thing as what we've just done to the other areas. We're just going to build this colour back up. So just using that dark blue grey base colour, and we're just going to follow, as you see, all of those creases and all those folds on the trousers. 
and we're going to leave the areas where the shade is sat in the recess so that's giving it a dark dark black sort of color and then this is going to allow us to give that little bit of a, a lighter blue boost to the trousers now for this i'm going to put a little bit of a different spin on the trousers just to kind of mix things up and do something completely different um, it's something that's quite easy to do uh, if you want to follow along you're more than welcome to but if you think that, that might be a little bit too much or too advanced or you're happy with the sort of two gray colors then by all means you can stop at this stage um, and your model will be sort of perfectly ready to play the game with you know you don't have to go too extreme and too over the top and he's already looking pretty cool and pretty ready to play so so if you want to, to, to follow along, uh, you're more than welcome. As I say, at the moment, I'm just using that base color um, and I'm just building that back up on all of those creases. Now from there, I'm gonna use Huldra Blue. Now this is an optional layer and that's all I'm doing is, with the scale 75, I've added a lot of water to this. So what I'm doing is, this is pretty much about five or six parts water to one part paint. So this creates a very simple sort of glaze color and although this is going on to the model looking like it's quite bright and it's quite vibrant because this is a glaze this is very very thin what this is going to do is this is just going to um, dry down um, in a very very thin way so this is going to add a tone and texture of this blue onto that gray but because of the dark gray underneath that dark gray is always going to show through as the the dominant color so we're going to get a little bit of a blue tone out of our trousers but without painting them actually fully blue if that makes sense so pretty much i'm just going to use again the tip of the brush but because this is such a thin glaze we're glazing this very very thin tone this very very thin color on top and this is going to create that sort of bluish tinge that's bl that blue color onto the trousers and as we go you'll see that this is looking quite bright and quite vibrant at the moment because the paint is wet but as the paint dries down this is also going to tone down as well so this isn't going to look too extreme or too over the top this is going to give us a really cool very um, different kind of texture to the trousers so whereas we base the tie area using just the plain red, we're now going to go back in with a, Mephis a Mephiston red, which is a nice, bright, vibrant red. And we're going to build this red just across the tie area here. So we're just going to build across the, um, the, 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 the sort of main tie point. And again, we're just using the very, very tip of the brush just to be as careful as possible. I have to excuse the sound of my cat playing with his toys. And then we're just going to move on and do the leathers of the, the, the shoes. Now, if you've watched me paint a lot of leathers previously in the past, you'll know that I've got a certain type of way of doing this. And that's all I'm doing is just using a nice little leather brown color. And this is going to be the base color boosted. So this is the first vibrant color. And again, I'm using one of those stippling techniques again. So this is not strict or straightforward brush strokes. This is me just dabbing the brush around uh, just to kind of create a little bit of a texture as well. So we're going to mix again using the leather brown and the deep brown. Again, I'm going to use half and half, so that's 50% of each. And once more, just using that random pattern stippling effect, as you can see, just kind of building a few of those uh, patterns, a few of those textures, a few of those layers just back on top. Again, I've added a little bit of water into this, so this creates a nice thin paint, a nice thin layer, and that will build a little bit of vibrancy, but without going too extreme and too over the top. And all in all, that is Brian Irons completed. That is him completely done from start to finish in a very, very quick and simple and easy way. Uh, really enjoyed painting this one because again, it's another one of those nostalgic characters from a video game that I played years ago when I was younger. And it's been really cool to bring him to life. You'll have to let me know in the comments what you think about this one and if this is something nice and simple and something that was really quick and easy to follow through. Um, and as always, I can't thank you guys enough for all of the support and positivity that you've shown me. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys on the next one.